Hello and welcome back. Um, I'm Kylie Corbin and this is Hoof Beats and Heartbeats and I am so happy to be doing another episode. This is episode two. Um, so basically what this episode is going to be on is developing a strong foundation in groundwork training. So to me this is really important and um, I primarily, I mean, I have a kind of a, I like to say I do about 30, 30, 70 with, so 30% groundwork, 70% under saddle. Um, because groundwork is important. I think a lot of people, um, neglect groundwork. It's so important though. There, and it's so much fun if you know how to do it right. Um, I personally love 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 groundwork um and i do groundwork with all of my horses i mean because you can do groundwork with retired horses even which is the best part about it um it's, there is it's a level for everyone okay so i again have bullet points and we're going to be talking on this bullet points the same way i did the last episode because this is how i work um okay so also if you have any feedback or if you have anything that you want me to talk on, um, or anything at all, feel free to email me at kjayde music at gmail.com and you can basically tell me anything. Um, so, also go follow my Instagram a underscore j a y d e underscore a um and follow my youtube which is also going to be hoof beats and heartbeats and then also uh follow my horse vaulting instagram which is going to be kj underscore e underscore horse underscore dancer um i think it's all those underscores i think um <laughs> And yeah, just go follow me on all those places. It really helps. And yeah, let's get started on this episode. And I'm really excited about it. Okay. Understanding the benefits of groundwork, uh, of groundwork training, including improved communication, respect, and trust between horse and handler. So this is one of my biggest reasons for groundwork. Um... And I think this is one of the biggest things in really like the eventing world uh, and the racing world actually is there's just like, <sighs> there is non-stop silliness on the ground. And to me, your horse shouldn't need to do all that. I don't care what your horse's breed is. Your horse should be able to act like a decent, you know, act behaving, like it does not, it does not need to be an idiot all the time. Like there, every horse has the capability to be calm, to be nice, to be relaxed. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is relaxed. Um, and I think this is a big thing in the last episode. So our last episode was um, communication and um, trust with your horse and building that. And um, to me, groundwork is one of the biggest things. I mean, I think I made a point of no matter if you rode a horse a million times versus brushing a horse a million times you will know more about that horse from dr brushing it a million times versus riding it a million times um so and one of the, and i mean again most of my work is groundwork i mean I, i'm gonna bring up something else for my last episode i had a horse in training her name is juliet and um, the biggest thing with this horse uh, was groundwork. She, that's all she was lacking. She actually had a really great under the saddle experience and she was actually blind and we didn't know that until I think the week after we got her. And I mean, I trained her for someone else, she wasn't mine. 
Um, but she had a great under the saddle experience. It wasn't even that she was just fearful and her groundwork lacked so ridiculously much. And I mean, groundwork really is the base of a relationship with the horse. Um, I don't, and I don't think you can have a great relationship with your horse and a quality horse without the groundwork. I really don't feel it's possible. And I mean, I feel like groundwork doesn't hurt your riding. It actually builds it up drastically. Okay. Developing a clear understanding of the horse's body language and how to use it to communicate effectively during groundwork. So, to me, I think that everyone needs to do research on horse behavior. Um, there are so many things, and I mean, another reason why I think groundwork is such a great thing, because if you, um, if you, um, are on the ground with a horse. You are able to see every aspect of them. You are able to see every single step they take. You are able to see when their jaw is tense. You are able to see every direction their ears move, whether their eyes are relaxed or wide open. You can literally see everything. And when you're on their back, it's more you have to feel everything. Um, and I think both are great. I think knowing how to feel it all and knowing how to see it all are both amazing things. Um, and groundwork just helps so much with understanding horses' instincts and understanding um, kind of how your horse works. Um, Okay, so, um, and I mean, honest to God, round work could literally be anything. I think that's another thing people forget. It's not, it doesn't have to be lunging, it doesn't have to be long lighting. And I mean, I honestly hate it being one thing. I think that your groundwork can literally be everything. It can be desensitizing, it can be, um, it can be patience training, it can be, uh, I like to say editing a gate. It can be editing their gates and being able to just like get them to pick their hind legs up more. Or, I mean, it really can be everything and it helps you, I mean, it helps you as an equestrian be able to see a gate. And to me, that's a very important thing to be able to do is to be able to see maybe if your horse is cross firing or, um, counter cantering like those are big things to notice and um seeing what a forward walk looks like versus a um maybe an uneven unbalanced walk looks like and i've even noticed this from teaching people if you have done a lot of groundwork it makes it 10 million times easier to do to teach people on the ground because you know what the gate looks like and when you're watching it you can see and you can kind of understand it's one reason i love to film all of my videos i actually f or film all my videos film all of my rides i film all of my rides in the arena um, and i upload them to my computer and i'm actually planning on going to start posting them to my youtube and voiceovers and explaining them what i'm doing um, and I mean the mo like the best part about that is really just um, you can see it, you know what it looks like, and if you're able to compare what you saw on the ground to what you're seeing in the video of you under saddle, and you can kind of click that in your brain, it's it's amazing. Anywho. Um, Incorporating basic exercises such as leading, lunging, and yielding to improve the horse's responsiveness and obedience. Um, honestly, anything you can do under saddle, you can do on their back. 
Um, and I think that's another thing that people kind of forget, but I mean, that's what liberty is, is it's literally horses doing everything that you do on their back, but you on the ground without any um, help. And there are so many countless types of, what are they called? exercises you can do, and I'm actually going to discuss those after I go through all these bullet points. I have more bullet points. You love my bullet points. That are different types of exercises. Um, so after we're done with all of this and kind of the explaining of why groundwork is so important, we're going to talk on that. But you can literally do anything. I mean, the first really, I mean, I started with free lunging. All of my horses start with free lunging in the round pin. That is the first groundwork exercise I do with with every single one of my horses. They all know how to free lunge. Um, and then after that, they usually will kind of learn basic things like how to, well, of course, the first thing they learn is leading. But um, once we get to the actual movement, and then we're, I like to teach people, my people, I like to teach my horses to trot um, in hand. And I start that by teaching them to trot in hand while like I'm running, and then I teach them to tr trot in hand while I'm walking, um, as well as whoa, and I mean you can teach vocal cues in hand, you can teach all of these things, also lunging, any under saddle exercise you can do with your horse on the ground, um, and then long, I mean you can, I mean it really improves. I think it's the main thing that gets your horse listening and understanding what you want. It's sometimes hard to get your horse to understand while you're on their back. Because you're worrying about so many other things at the same time. Um, okay. Understanding the importance of timing and release in the groundwork training and using feedback from the horse to refine cues and aids. So yeah, this is basically a lot about release of pressure. So. I like to use release of pressure or um, positive reinforcement or I mean, a combination of both usually. Um, and I mean, it's just, I think another, I think one big fault I see when people do groundwork though is they will forget to give the release. Just because they're not on their back, they still need the release. Um, people try, like to put constant pressure on them and it's like that's not your horse doesn't learn unless the pressure is taken off so i mean that's kind of an idea that i think a lot of people kind of forget is like you need to understand how the horse's brain works to get them to understand these things and i mean i think that's one big thing with trick training i love trick training but um trick training you have to know when to release, when it was an improvement. Because with trick rating, training, it's really a 1% leads to a 100% thing, um, and like a 1% every day, because like you don't get a trick in the first day. You get a trick over 100 days. Um, okay. But, I mean, I think another thing is like really deciding what cues you want to use. I like to keep all of my cues for all my horses the same. Um, like I taught my horse to lower his head by, a lot of people I know like putting pressure on the pole, but I just kind of tap right behind his ear. Um, and I tap there and he drops his head, any of my horses. I, I'm specifically talking about Corona because I recently taught him this. Um, and that's kind of like, but you have to understand what cues you're using. You don't want to change your cues too terribly often and I mean, I think sitting down and coming out with a base plan before going in the arena and actually working with them is a great idea so you're not confusing yourself and confusing your horse. Because um, I mean, I definitely, in the time that I've, I've been doing groundwork, I mean, the entire time that I've ever had horses off, I mean, before I had a, my riding horse, Ed, um, I actually, we had Sanford and Flyer, who are our retired racehorses, and the biggest thing with them is like whenever I first started getting into horses again, because um, I used to ride when I was little, and then I, I kind of stopped, and I started doing gymnastics, and I came back to it when I was older, 
and um, my the thoroughbreds I mean I couldn't ride them they hadn't been ridden in probably six years seven years so they weren't rideable so I didn't ever ride them when I first started so I didn't my first I want to say two or three months of getting back into horses maybe even longer it may have been four months but my first time of getting back into horses really was just completely I would hand graze horses um I would just walk them everywhere I'd take them to the water you know that and I mean I would free lunch I mean those were the things that I did that's all I did um because they, they, they weren't rideable I mean I wasn't going to go off ride these thoroughbreds and I hadn't ridden in six years and they haven't been ridden in six years um so I think that's the main reason I have such a big love for groundwork is like that was my start um but it's I, again I think people think it's so boring but it's actually so much fun I mean there, there's never ending stuff you can teach your horse okay next one under oh you know Understanding common challenges in groundwork training, such as resistance or lack of focus, and working with qualified trainers as needed. Um, yeah. Wait, I'm trying to remember what I wanted to bring up with this one. Yeah, so, I mean, I think one thing that really stops people is a lot of people don't, I mean, a lot of horses didn't get groundwork from day one, especially um, really Western horses, I'd say. English horses as well, but I mean like really cowboyed up Western horses. Like barrel horses and stuff, and um, rodeo horses. Not barrel horses, but rodeo horses. They weren't handled up on until they were two, most of the time, one or two. So, one of the biggest issues with this to me is they weren't imprinted on. They weren't taught basic things like, I mean, I think your horse needs time to be a horse and be a baby. I don't think there's anything wrong with having your horse out on the paddock until they're young. What I do think is wrong is speeding up the process to getting onto their back. Um, it's not a rush thing. I mean, every horse is different. Um, and I think so many horses, I mean, really in Western and English, it's a big thing in both. I'm actually not even just going to say Western because I've seen it countless, no, probably even more in English. I mean, that's why I, I regret saying that because, I mean, really in both, there's countless numbers of people who rush into the riding part. Um, and they forget kind of the importance of the getting the horse to feel safe and confident and comfortable with you. Um, I mean, it's the whole thing that what the last podcast was about. I mean, groundwork really is the base of what of trust and confidence with your horse. I mean, it, it is the base. It is the start of it all. I mean, if you don't have groundwork, you have nothing. If you can't lead your horse into the arena, how are you going to get on them? I mean, that's what race horses are. I mean, they... I mean, they they have groundwork, but they don't have manners. I mean, they don't know any different. So, um, it's really a whole thing of like, yeah, a lot of horses didn't start with a lot of groundwork. So it's something that needs to be taught to them when they're older. And it's a little harder to teach them when they're older. I mean, if you see horses that are super anxious, that's because they are not good. If you do a lot of groundwork, your horses, usually the anxious, like anxiety part of them will usually kind of go away because they feel a security blanket with you. And you kind of want that. You kind of want to be their safe place. Um, and I mean, of course, with the qualified trainers needed, I mean, for me, so I just started training Corona and I'm, I'm actually working with a couple trainers with him. I think he's the first horse I'm starting. From, I've I had, had him since he was a month old, and he's the first horse I'm starting from nothing. And I actually got on him for the first time today, and I mean, he did not react at all. He did not care. We just, we did went for a 20 minute, we walked around in the round pen for a while, and we were all good. And it was the first 
thrive in the most uneventful thing I think I've ever done in my entire life. Um, and that's how you want it to be, though. It doesn't need to be that, like, you don't want to get up and start trying and cantering and all that. Like, you really just want to get up and walk and um, get them moving forward and maybe... Like, that's really all you want, is to start understanding forward. Um, it's kind of the main focus of it all. Um, and, I mean, without, I mean, if you don't have a horse that can understand, like, I like all of my horses to know how to ground tie. It's, like, a really important thing to me. I like all my horses to know how to be also be tied anywhere. Um, and be calm and I like all my horses to be able to walk out with me and to be able to trot on a lead and I like all of my horses to um, understand how to lunge I mean there are a lot of basic things that my horses have to know how to do um, like all my horses need to know how to drop their heads and to stand while they're tacked up that a lot of horses don't know and that again it's so much patience I think that's one reason why people don't like groundwork is it takes so much patience and it's so much consistency um but again it's really important and it's honestly really really necessary um to get where you want if i mean i think every horse should be able to um stand while being tacked up. If your horse can't stand while, won't stand while being tacked up or while being brushed, and they're just anxious all the time and looking at everything and biting things, and um, that's not good. Like, you don't want that. I mean, like, it's, it's a matter of safety, too, and I mean, I think that's kind of the main reason I love groundwork so much, is it, it makes your horse safe. And I mean, groundwork is also considered, I mean, desensitizing is groundwork. Um, and I mean, I love desensitizing. Desensitizing is so much fun. I mean, I do it, I do it every three months. I do a kind of go around with all my horses to keep them up on the desensitization stuff, um, which I, I haven't posted the video, but I have a video of China and me doing it. Um, I need, I need to film it with, I need to film a couple of my other horses doing it too, because it's lots of fun. Um, okay. What's the next one? <laughs> oh, but Corona, I mean, Corona's not a dangerous horse, but the biggest thing with him is like, I mean, I didn't need anyone to help me with the groundwork part of him because I mean, I, that's like my main thing was groundwork. Um, but uh, like while riding, I, I'm actually working with two different trainers. I'm working with my dressage instructor and then another natural horsemanship trainer, um, Steven Stevens, is who's helping me with him, and then Brianna Williams. They're both helping me with him, and I mean, it. They're. I mean, it's just to me, it's important to surround yourself with lots of great. Oh, and then also uh, one of my grandfather's friends is also helping me, who I've been around my whole life, and I mean. It's just so great, and he's, I mean, he's trained with Chris Cox and, um, oh, what's that guy's name? I don't remember the other guy's name, but he's trained with two amazing trainers. I mean, he's trained countless numbers of young horses, and I mean, and, like, I think surrounding, I think so many people think that, like, being, um, like, needing help by trainers and needing... I don't like to send my horses to training, to be honest, because I want to be the one to doing it, do it, so I've never sent a horse to training. But I have worked with trainers, and I mean, I think that's kind of the biggest, most important thing in my eyes is working with trainers. Um, I mean, that's where you get your experience from. I love, I mean, I, I watch clinics on YouTube, and I, I mean, I've gone to many clinics, and I mean, there are so many different things you can learn um, and clinics, and I mean, I love clinics so much, um, and I plan on going to many clinics, with Corona even, because clinics really give you a couple days with a trainer for them to tell you all that they know, and that's, um, 
really valuable in my eyes. Um, being able to work with all these people, I mean, it's, it's, I, I'm really thankful for it to be able to work with all these different people. Okay, um, developing a, a constant and structured, structured groundwork program that meets the need of each individual horse. Yeah, so for all of my horses, so Corona, all of his training has been groundwork up to now. Um, and I mean, even pony can be groundwork too. I'm gonna mention all the different groundwork plays in a minute. But um, all of my horses have a groundwork routine. So, I mean, except for China right now. I haven't done a lot of groundwork with her recently, but she is pretty solid. She's a little older. Um, but Mac, I mean, I lunge him once a week. Um, I do liberty work, work with him once a week. Um, and that kind of, and then like I, that kind of covers it for him. I mean, I'm only out there four days a week. So the other, like that's kind of mixed in. So I ride him four days a week, and those two things are kind of mixed in with those riding days, um, depend like whatever days and whatever time. And I mean, I usually try to have a lunging session with him, um, because that keeps him strong. And then I like to have um, the liberty with him, because that keeps his brain working and trying new things. Um, and I mean, I also schedule his riding a lot too. So I, I'm not gonna talk about that now because that's another episode plan. Um, but then like Corona, I mean, I've done countless numbers of things, which I'm actually gonna mention those at the end, um, at this, or like the second session section of this. Um, and then China, I like to do a lot of um, standing work with her. That's kind of all she does. And we don't do a lot of desensitization, or not, we do a lot of desensitization. We don't do a lot of, um, groundwork because she's really solid in that. Um, but like the main thing that I do is like every three months I do desensitization work. And that's like an important part of what I do is like every three months I do a like a hour long desensitization session. And it's just with all sorts of scary things and they just like usually are calm with it by the end. Um, and I, I'll pop balloons. I mean, and they're usually chill with it in the beginning and they're chill with it at the end because I mean, do it so much. Um, but that makes it, the other thing about that is it makes it to whenever you, when you bring your horses new places, they trust you a lot. I mean, like they understand, um, you as well as you understanding them, right? It's, I mean, it's outside of it being you understanding your horse, it's also your horse understanding you and spending time with your horse. Um, so yeah. Um, incorporating creative, creative, creativity and problem solving into groundwork exercise to keep engaged, horse engaged and motivated. Okay, I'm actually gonna mention that closer towards the end because um, I want to talk about all of my different groundwork things that I do at the end. <laughs> okay. Um, understanding the role of groundwork and developing safe and successful riding partnerships with the horse. Yeah, I think a lot of people think if they do too much groundwork, they're kind of just like um, half-assing life or whatever, and like they're not getting as much accomplished. But really, groundwork is the base of your riding. All of it leads up to your riding. Um, it's all to help with you, your safety under saddle. Um, having your horse listen to you and trust you um, and understand your horse better. Um, I mean, it, it truly helps your horse. And then, I mean, again, it makes your horse safe. I mean, it makes your horse um, active manners and calm and understand what you are about to do. And that's good. Um, that's good for your horse. If you're constantly on their back and then you try to lead them, I mean they're going to act like an idiot. I mean, that's why you have these horses that will like try to trot while you're trying to have them walk in hand. But those thoroughbreds are like that, which that can be trained out of them. A lot of people think it can't. That can be trained out of any horse. Um, I like to use positive reinforcement for it because positive reinforcement works amazing. Um, but like trailering your horse, if you're only ever gonna trailer your horse when you're going to the bed or going to a show, your horse isn't gonna know how to trailer correctly, right? Um, so, yeah, 
So, it, I mean, it really makes your horse safer, and it makes riding a lot more enjoyable for both of you. Okay, addressing safety, consider it, oh yeah, addressing safety considerations in groundwork training, such as appropriate equipment, blah, blah, blah. Um, I also think this is very important. Uh, my horse holding coach stresses this a lot. Um, un like correct horsemanship and um, with your horse, and I mean how you handle your horse is all really important, both under saddle and um, in groundwork. I mean, it's in I'd say that's a big deal. Is like making sure like where you're working is safe. Making sure that you're like you're holding your lunch line correctly so you don't get drugged. I mean, just yeah, make sure you're aware of all these things. Okay. Wait. <laughs> uh, resources for further learning. Yeah. So resources. For <laughs> resources for further learning and development in groundwork training, such as books or online courses. Yeah. I mean, you can really find. Um, there are. There's one lady that I love. I absolutely love her book. Um, and it's Groundwork 101, and I love it so much. There are so many different types of groundwork exercises in there, and I love it. And I mean, I've used it for years. Um, and then online courses, yeah. YouTube, um, I think it's great to read about it and to see it. But YouTube is great. YouTube, you can get so much information so quickly. Um, and yeah, I mean, even TikTok, you can see such quick, like, groundwork things. And I mean, really writing things and writing exercises. I mean, really, YouTube, you can learn literally everything. And I love it. Um, YouTube is so great. Same thing with Facebook groups. Um, Facebook groups are great for um, learning. Uh, Facebook groups are great for learning about really everything, but there's a lot of, I mean, because you can, I think that the more people you can learn from, the better. Okay, cool. So, we're going to discuss all of the different exercises that, I mean, I use and that you can use if you'd like to, and kind of the main ones that I think are important to have in your horse's routine for your horse to know, and I think every horse should have these things. Um, Okay, leading exercises. Practicing leading the horse on a lead rope uh, with good body position and timing and incorporating exercises such as halting, backing up, and turning on the forehand and or haunches. Okay, so if you are a um, halter person, you do showmanship. That is what this is. It's basically teaching showmanship things. And I, mean, I think that's a great thing for all horses to know is um, basic showmanship maneuvers. Um, such as, yeah, turning on the haunches and forehand, um, and, I mean, halting, backing up. I think that those are all really important. I think every horse should know how to back up on the lead, which I, I've actually realized a lot of horses don't. Um, and the way I taught Corona, and I mean, teaching a horse to back up is kind of, it's actually kind of difficult, I've realized, because you are going against their... You're going against their instincts so much. Um, so you kind of it's 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 just kind of a hard thing. I taught Corona by um, you kind of I I'm not, I'll post a demonstration of it. <laughs> okay, this is kind of hard to explain. Um, but yeah, so I think every horse should know how to back up walk, trot, whoa, on the lead. And I think those are things that every horse should know how to do, whether they are rideable or not, and turning both directions. I think it's really, really important. Um, and I think it's really, really easy too. It doesn't have to all be so hard. And I mean, if you take it all slow, it's really easy. Like this stuff should all be able to be done very calmly for your horse. It should be a very easy, simple thing for your horse. I mean, as long as you're patient, I mean, really everything's gonna be calm and easy and uneventful. 
lunging exercises, teaching your horse to lunge on a circle at walk, shot, and canter while you also incorporating transition, changes of direction, and round pose. Okay, so I love lunging horses so much. So I'm actually a walker, right? Um, so... Um, so I'm actually a vaulter, right? Um, and Corona's going to be a vaulting horse in a couple years, hopefully. So one of the biggest things with this is how you lunge. And I mean, I think it's important whenever you teach a horse to lunge that they know out. Um, they know how to do all transitions from every gate. They should be able to walk to canter, trot to canter walk to trot, trot to walk, canter to walk, canter to stop, trot to stop, all of the different walk to stop, all of the different transitions should be possible by your horse. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's, it's lots of fun too. I enjoy lunging. And I mean, there's all sorts of exercises you can do too. I don't think it has to be boring. I mean, Corona loves a diversity because he gets bored really quickly. So I have to keep him interested by doing all sorts of different things. So, I mean, pole exercises are great. They are great for editing your horse's gait, um, having them trot over poles or through poles um, are all great things. I think having your horse trot and where you, uh, or I mean, on the lunge line and where you walk with them and have them go in a straight line on the lunge line across the arena is also a great thing to do. I've seen my vaulting coach do that quite a few times. I think it's great for having your horse be uh, straight and center and forward. Um, and yeah, um, I mean, changes of direction. I don't like my horses changing direction unless I have them stop. And how we teach my horses to stop is I, I want my horses on the lunge to stop out in the circle. I do not want them coming towards me. I want them to stop out in the circle and let me come to them. Um, and the main reason for that is vaulting purposes. It's not really like a, and I mean also safety purposes. I don't want a horse run. I, Corona used to turn and try to run towards me when I'd lunch him and basically making that boundary was great for him. I mean, it was, it was, it was really necessary. Um, Okay, yielding exercises. Practicing yielding a horse's hindquarters. Okay, I don't do this very often. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I wrote that, because I do not do yielding exercises too terribly often. I need to more, but I'm not going to speak on it because I don't do them enough to talk about it. Ground tying exercises. I think this is so important. Teaching horses to stand quietly and patiently in one place without being tied, which can be useful for grooming, tacking up, or mounting. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you can actually, I mean, see on my Instagram, I think I posted, my horses will ground tie whether I'm doing cartwheels and front handsprings and running and circles around them um, if they get, are given the cue. And I mean, I think that was one of the most important things I taught my horse. Same thing with ground tying while I'm tacking them, which was really hard to teach actually. Um, but I think it's important for horses to stand while you're, they're being tacked. Um, I don't really care if my horse stands while being mounted. The first year or so I care, and then I stop caring. Um, because if I were training a horse for someone else, it's a different aspect. Training for myself, I don't care. It doesn't affect me. I mean, Corona's learning to stand while I'm getting on him, um, only because, um, I need, like, I need him, that's just, I want him to be started nicely. Um, and understand that he can't just go run off without me. Okay, which honestly, ground time, I took all of my horses in underground time, except for my thoroughbred. Outside of that, I mean, I taught Mac to ground tie. My horses can, if I, if I tell them to ground tie in the arena, I can go run to the barn real quick and come back to the arena and they'll still be there. And I mean, I, I love all about them. 
Um, it really teaches your horse's patience. And I, mean, I think having, I mean, it really tells if your horse is patient. I think teaching a horse patience is a really big deal. And I mean, the main way that you can teach a horse patience, I like to tie them up for hours, um, have them in the trailer for a couple hours. Um, I want my new favorite thing to do. I will take a book and I'll be ponying the horse and I'll just stop and I'll stand for like an hour and I'll just read a book. Um, uh, also, yeah, it's, and I mean, that's my favorite thing recently, and I mean, I think that makes a drastic difference in your horse. Okay, these are some exercises. Introducing the horse to various objects, sounds, or movements on the ground to help them become more confident and less reactive. I think this is really important because I think if your horse is able to think properly, and I mean, I also like having distractions around while doing, I think, um, a way to make all groundwork exercises a little higher level for your horse is have distractions going around on around your horse and have them still pay attention to you. That really shows that your horse is in touch with you and y'all are really um, synced up and I think that's great. Um, but desensitization exercises are amazing and I mean they I think they're um, extremely important and I think every horse needs to be desensitized a lot. Um, not even specifically to be kid-proof, but to be safe. Um, so yeah. Um, and then liberty exercises. Practicing groundwork without a lead rope or other equipment, which can help build trust and communication between horse and handler. I love liberty work. Um, I do so much liberty work. My, I, I tr train with liberty. Um, and I think it really gets me in touch with my horse uh, so much. And I mean, I really believe, I mean, most of, I want to start Liberty with Flyer, and I actually think I'm gonna record his journey with it so that I can post it on my YouTube and y'all can watch it. Um, and I mean, I, I believe liberty is like really the end goal of everything for me. I mean, I want everything to be possible at liberty. Um, I mean, I want dressage stuff to be possible at liberty. Like even while I'm on their back, I want to be able to be at liberty on their back. I mean, I think it's uh, which is bareback and bridalist and stuff. But I think it's all so amazing, and I mean, I love watching. Liberty trainers and I actually really want to go to a Liberty clinic because I, I, I'm not really great at it <laughs> to be honest, but I'd love to be better at it because it's such, I, I think it's so beautiful and amazing when it's trained really well. Um, okay. Next up, we have trailer loading exercises, teaching the horse to load calmly and confidently into the trailer, which can be useful for transportation and emergency situations. Keyword, emergency situations. I think it is incredibly important to, um, to for horses to know how to load and unload calmly without any ropes or anything because when you have a horse, especially like a sedated horse even, and they know how to get in the trailer, it makes life 10 times easier. Um, I mean, I every once in a while I'll just load my horse, because like, like my trailer is just at the barn, so sometimes I'll just like, if I'm walking past it, I'll just load my horse in the trailer. Um, I think it's really important. I think it's important that your horse knows when to step down out of the trailer, if you have a trailer without a, without a slant, which I don't. Uh, I don't have one with a uh, with a slant or a, with a I don't know what it's called. I don't know the word. Um, but yeah, it's it's so important to me. Like the amount of horses that I've gone to go look at who are like, oh, I don't really know if he'll load. Like, excuse me, like. That should be the, f like, I think the f one of the first things Corona learned was how to load. I mean, he knew how to load before he was three months old, and then he went to go be trained, 
or what am I saying? I know, and he went to go to the vet and get surgery to get a hernia removed, and I mean, he was able to load calmly, and I mean, I think that was the best thing, and I mean, the vets were able to load him and all that, so, yeah. Uh, what else is there? Which, actually, <laughs> okay, actually, I have a story about that. Um, when we were actually bringing him home, he was being a little difficult in the trailer, I mean, last night when the trailer got there, and I'm going surgery and it probably wasn't very little and he was being a little difficult I mean I was probably 11 or 12 at this time so he and he was a, a, a little he was a little under a year so I was trying to trailer him and he just would not load like he just was like no I don't like not right now and I mean but the, the issue wasn't really that he would not load. It's that I had four people, four or five people around me trying to help me load this horse. And I mean, I, and then the, um, the vet tried to help me load and I was like, stop, like, you know, back up because I mean, it's my horse. Stop messing with my horse. Let me do it. I know my horse better than you do. And I, I remember she said, I mean, it's probably because I was so young, but I was experienced enough at the time with this horse. I mean, I knew this horse in and out. I mean, I, but she said, she was like, I've been like, I do this for a living. I, I, I think, I think I know what I'm doing. And I was like, excuse me, you're saying, you know, my horse better than me? No. And I told my girl, I was like, get oh, I just kind of I was like yeah get these people backed up and give me like a whip like and get the whip and just kind of tap them so we can get them in and we got them in after everybody backed up um so yeah that's a moment for that story the like the moral of that story is don't let anyone tell you that they know your horse any better than you they don't um yeah don't because people will try to do things and they'll be like, I know I've been doing this for however many years. Yeah, but you you don't have the trust with this horse. If anyone tries to tell you that they could do something with your horse better than you can, uh, they have to prove it to you. And that girl tried to prove it to me and she proved me absolute, she tr proved herself absolutely wrong and I got him in. Um, okay. In hand exercises. Wait, check the time real quick. Okay, in hand exercises. Practicing basic dressage movements such as shoulder in or haunches in while, while leading a horse from the ground can improve supplement, 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 supplement. And obedience as well. Yeah, I've actually started doing kind of classical dressage training under, like, on the ground. I mean, I think it's. I'm not going to explain this too much because I, I don't think it's my place because I don't know too much about it, but I would love to have a guest on here that maybe knows more about it. Um, but yeah, I think it's incredibly important to um, do in like anything you do on their back to be able to do in hand. I think it uh, that's, makes you a top tier equestrian. Okay. Obstacle courses, obstacle course exercises such as setting up obstacle courses with various challenges such as cones, poles, or jumps to help develop your horse's balance and coordination and confidence on the ground. Yeah, I love doing this. I used to do this as a kid a lot more. Like, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, like a couple years ago, I used to do this all the time. I would just set up all sorts of little things, and I do little obstacle courses with my horses, and I still do. I still love doing this. Um, I love doing trails, so it's. You know, I I did a lot of trail stuff with it. Okay, um, but yeah, I think that's also helps your horse be super confident in every aspect of life as if they have run over obstacles before, and especially I mean it makes them trust you a lot, especially if it's something they've never seen before. Um, it's it's great. Okay. Long lining exercises using two long lines to stimulate riding aids, develop the horse's balance for them rhythm and obedience from the ground. Yeah, I love, I call this line, uh, what do I call this? Oh, line driving. I love line driving. I think you're able to, again, this is what I mean when you say you can do literally everything under your saddle on the ground. You can either do it 
in hand, uh, line driving or uh, or lunging. And I think you should be able to do everything you can do on their back, on the ground, if possible, um, to perfect on the ground. Um, but yeah, I love, I line drive before I train every horse that I have. And I think it's an extremely, um, I think it's, it's, it's extremely important for um, your horse to know, uh, to feel you behind them first. I mean, that's the main reason I do. I do it with all young horses to teach them. It's okay that someone's behind you. Um, okay, yeah. And I mean, I think that's a bit of a wrap up for this episode. This was really enjoyable to film. I love groundwork. If you can't tell, I do so much groundwork. I'm planning on posting a couple. I hope to post some YouTube videos about groundwork um, pretty soon. So yeah, I hope that everyone can be there for that if they want to and see those on my YouTube channel, Hoofbeats and Heartbeats. Same thing as on here. I change it to that so it'd be easier to find. Um, and yeah, just go follow me on all of my social medias. And again, if you'd like to me uh, message me for suggestions or anything, um, you can message K-J-A-Y-D-E music at gmail.com. And I'm currently coming up with a schedule. I do not have a schedule yet. Um, but I'm thinking right now, I'm kind of feeling maybe, um, Tuesdays and, no, 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 no. Uh, Mondays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Saturdays are kind of what I'm thinking right now and then maybe posting a YouTube every uh, Thursday or something like that. So having Tuesday and Saturday and then a YouTube out on Thursday um, every week is kind of what I'm feeling right now, but I don't have that 100%, so I'll let you know when I do. But yeah, thank you for listening to this episode. It was lots of fun to film and I hope that you learned a little something about groundwork and maybe you're going to go try something new with your horse. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you and peace out.